Well hello there everybody, I'm Murray and today we're going to put a helicopter in our videos. I'm going to show you a couple of mistakes that I made, um, maybe you can learn from those and just show you the workflow that I use because maybe you can learn some new techniques on compositing different elements into your videos um, and in this example a helicopter. It is a little tough though and it might take a while um, so just hang in there, grab a pop uh, thing of popcorn <laughs> and let's just jump in. <laughs> Now the way I shot this is I took the blades off the helicopter because I'm going to have to make them move in post and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. But they were pretty simple, they just clipped off and I also set up the helicopter on a stand uh, with string but I suggest you guys do it in a sturdy way, that way when you actually turn the helicopter it's nice and strong and it doesn't jiggle or anything like that. Um, because I had to make the camera move rather than the helicopter because the helicopter was tied down and it was just a bit flimsy and it would have moved a lot. So I just moved the camera instead of the helicopter and that just made things easier. I also made sure that the lighting was similar to the scene that I'm going to put it in. So I have Luke on a diffused scene, the clouds are diffusing the light and so I wanted a similar light source to the helicopter. So I just bounced a lot of light. I also put some diffusion on the lights as well, so that helped. Okay, and then I have my footage. So here's Luke in his scene, and he's reacting to the helicopter. And what I want to do first actually is work with the helicopter. Um, and I've done a bit of stuff ahead so that you guys don't have to see me waste a whole bunch of time. All I did was key this helicopter out. And if you want to pause the video and see the settings I have here, I'm not going to go too deep into it because the background was not very good and here yeah, let me just give you a look here so i essentially used a blue blanket and so it wasn't the most ideal thing um and there was a lot of uh, problems i ran into and so i'm just going to leave it like that and uh, you can see the settings here there's a lot of keying videos on youtube i'm not going to really go through that um, this is an extreme situation here, so take it with a grain of salt. But the next thing I did was just duplicate it at about five times or so underneath. Um, that just kind of cut off this this graininess. Um, let's take the quality down just a bit, and you can see that it'll just it just it's pretty grainy. So uh, what I did was just added a few duplicates underneath, and it actually improves it significantly. And so, also what I did, since the flag on the helicopter is the same color as the background, what I did was just, I you know, du duplicated the helicopter, uh, made a, a mask right here, and I uh, keyframed the mask path, and um, took off the key, and just followed the helicopter, and it looks pretty good. But anyways, um, I also have uh, the large blades, I just downloaded this, but you can use whatever blades you want. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the detail of uh, getting the mask or cutting out the helicopter um, blades from the background because um, they're going to be moving and there's going to be a lot of motion blur. So if you if you don't like masking or anything like that, you don't have to pay too much attention to detail to it. And then I have the small blades and actually what I did was I grabbed the rotation. I'm going to show you on the big ones, but I grabbed the rotation and I just made it go crazy. I keyframed it all the way to the end and this, I turned on the motion blur for for the comp and for the layer but so essentially what, I, what I'm going to do is get the rotation values keyframe that drag it all the way to the beginning and then I'm just going to choose some crazy number I'm going to hold shift so I can make it go f further uh, I'm going to get it to probably times let's see 81 300 57 degrees okay so I'm going to drag the keyframe all the way out and let's just see how fast that'll be okay so you can see that it's pretty slow or it looks slow it's not slow because there's no motion blur so I'm going to turn on the motion blur I'm going to just click F4 so I can get that and it's already turned on and turn the composition motion blur settings on and you can see when I'm doing a ramp preview it's quite taxing um, obviously have it on full but you can see how slow this is going so just keep that in mind there we go that looks pretty good okay 
And so I did the same for both blades. And now I'm going to start working on my helicopter here. So as you can see, I'm going to turn this down. Okay, it is already on half. And you can already see that there's a bit of movement in here. And that's great. Um, I wanted that because the helicopter is going to be flying down. And I'm going to see a little bit of the underneath of the aircraft um, due to its perspective. So I, I did that on purpose. And then obviously went towards the end, it's more level towards um, eye level. And so... Uh, there is a slight issue there is because when I drag in my blade composition let's see um, let's go with the big blades first drag that in and I'm just going to pull it there and uh, before I do anything I'm going to uh, go to F4 and just make it a 3d layer and I'm going to show you why and I'm going to drag that underneath the helicopter Let's bring it up a bit and I'm going to rotate it. So click R and go to the, what was it? It's not the Z, it's the X axis. And I'm just going to rotate it a bit. I'm just kind of along with the aircraft like that. And I'm going to scale the blades up. Hold shift when I'm scaling. That looks good. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the small blade composition in. And I'm also going to put that underneath. I'm going to pull that out towards there. And I'm going to scale that down to... Yeah, that looks okay there. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is... The blades are not attached to the helicopter like that. So what I'm actually going to do is do a bit of tracking. Now, if you haven't seen tracking before, I've done quite a few videos in the past on how to track your stuff, but I'm going to re really quickly run through this. So with my helicopter selected, I'm going to track motion, get the tracker onto the point I want to track. Let's see, let's go about how about there? Let's see how this turns out. And I'm going to track forward. Okay, edit target. I'm going to send it to the big blades. Okay, apply. Yes, please. Alrighty. And you know what? I don't really like that. But, you know, I'm going to leave it there just for the sake of time. But... I would probably take that out and in fact in the example that you saw in the beginning of the video I put the blades on top of it because I was too lazy to take it out and, and it looked kind of weird so I just put the blades on it but I got to do the same thing for this side but actually I'm just going to keyframe it um, because I mean, you know what actually I'm going to track it tracking is going to be much easier for me I think all right and that's track that was actually very simple Let's just do a preview just to see what it looks like so far. Okay, I'm getting impatient. Let's check it out. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Um, you know what? I'm just going to take that little knot off because it's annoying me. I'm just going to draw around it. Subtract. Feather to about five. Yeah, and then I'm just going to keyframe, oops, there it is, mask path, okay, and I'm just going to copy that mask onto all the others, and solo that, there we go. All right, that looks much better. Okay, now that we have the helicopter done, we can start moving on to our main scene. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate my footage. I'm going to bring in the helicopter in between the two. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to create an alpha mat. I mean, you can mask this out because obviously the helicopter is going to be behind this and outside the building. Uh, you can keyframe and do some rotoing, but you know, I'm too lazy and I actually found a better way to do that. 
Um, now keep in mind that you would have to have two, extre two extremes. So for example, this is pretty bright and this is pretty dark. That's going to really help with a mat uh, track mat. Um, obviously you're going to have some trouble with the uh, trees and stuff over here, but I'll, I'll get to there when we get to there. But in this example, he's very dark and the house is very dark, so this is going to be nice. I don't have to keyframe him the whole time with a mask to have him um, in front of the helicopter. Um, and so let's do this. Um, I'm going to select the difference mat, put it onto the top layer. And I'm going to have mat only. I'm going to have none. Center, obviously, 16 for the matching softness and the blur before difference is at 5.7. Now you can see there's a, is, it's a track mat essentially. And what I'm going to do is you can see that there's some bushes here. Okay, so just to help you understand what, what this actually means, the black is going to reveal and the white is going to conceal. So essentially, everything that's black, you're still going to see. And everything that's white, the helicopter is going to be on top of it. So, for example, if I go to the helicopter layer and go to track mat, luma mat, you can see that the helicopter is underneath this hole and if I go further up you can see that it's let's have a look um, over here you can see that it's behind this so I don't have to roto any of this which is nice there's a little bit spot there but we'll fix that and um, it looks pretty good and let's see what it looks like when it gets to the subject okay look at that see we don't even have to mask them out that's really cool it saves us a bunch of time so just a quick trick so you can see that there's some still some trees showing through. That's okay. We're going to deal with that last because I remember when I did this the first time, I kind of moved that previously and then I changed the timing of the setup of the of the sequence and mixed things around and I had to adjust the mask and all kinds of stuff. So we'll deal with that later. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually track the scene here. So I'm going to go to track camera. I'm just going to do a detailed analysis and then I'm just gonna wait for it to finish tracking. Okay, now that it's tracked our footage and solved our camera, we can see there's a whole bunch of points here. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, let's just move to where, okay, let's make the target size smaller. And essentially what we're trying to do, there we go. Okay, so we're trying to find a target point that is parallel to the ground and that is in the general area of where the helicopter is. So what I'm going to do is just create null in camera. I'm just going to turn that null off. And here's the fun part. I'm going to turn the helicopter into a 3D layer. And look, it's already in the scene. All right. Uh, but the thing is, is that we need to scale and reposition it accordingly. So let's go. Actually, so the helicopter is only going to start when we come down here, about there, I'd say. And so we're going to get the position. We're going to keyframe the position and we're going to take it up right out of frame. And you can see it's seeping through that. We can fix that later. But we're going to send it up and right about here where the camera starts to dip down is where we'll bring the helicopter down. Okay. And let's just actually just make this point, bring it all the way down to its final position. And what we're going to do is actually... We're going to move it over to the side a bit, and the same with the other one. Bring it down there. Okay, that way it just interacts with this a little bit and it looks a little more realistic. But also, I'm going to make it land on its bottom wheel first and then the front. Um, and so, let's just have a look. I need to get a preview of this so we can see what's going on. Okay, pretty decent. What I'm going to do is go to the rotation. I'm going to, I'm just going to keyframe everything just in case I change it. 
and actually these are going to be towards the end here and I'm just going to change the rotation of the Z so that you know it kind of comes in at a slight angle let's do that a little more let's go something like that right yeah so it kind of evens out um, over here let's take it oops what did I have it up the previous keyframe okay so 15 12 let's see when it gets to there or when it stops moving is when I put the keyframe essentially so now it's going to start settling down I'm going to have to change the position as well so that it doesn't do this weird moving over here but actually I'm going to take the rotation down to 10 that way it's just landing on the sand okay so when the rotation stops over here is where it lands let's see where so the wheel stops right over there so I'm gonna have to take its position to there so that it looks like it lands there let's see okay so I put it too far forward okay so I've kind of played around with the settings here um, with the position and rotation and I think I've got a pretty good it's not perfect but I think it's time to move on so all I have is uh, once it's landed here um, as it rotates through this uh, distance here it's going to change position and I'm basically just keeping the back wheel in the same spot so that as if it's hit the ground and the front wheel is just starting to land okay and so the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this helicopter layer I'm going to drag it underneath that helicopter I'm going to take the track mat off and uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, reset its position and rotation so I'm just going to press P and then shift R so I can keep the position and rotation values up at the same time I'm just going to zoom out and from the beginning here I'm going to set a keyframe and then well actually I'm going to have to send that further so the, it's going to start out way down here just like that and then when it comes in to where it lands I'm going to bring its position up oh, I first got to change its orientation or scale just like that get its wheel pretty lined up there and so the first thing I'm going to do here is affect its rotation so I'm going to go back here and its rotation is going to be let's say negative 10 and then when it comes in it's going to be at negative 8 and then towards the end till about there it's going to get set back down to 0 alright and then with its position here about here so I'm just lining up the back wheels right now and again this just takes tweaking just like the other one just to match it up I'm trying to match the the movement of the top piece here and so just to check the movement I'm just gonna scrub through it it looks pretty good now obviously this doesn't want to look like this because it's not the real helicopter so I'm gonna add a curves to this layer to the bottom layer I'm just going to crush the highlights all the way down so it's all the way black and then I'm going to go to the opacity let's see what does 50% look like okay we're going to add a fast blur to this because it's too sh too uh, harsh let's take it up let's see 30 let's do more shadows are pretty diffused 
Let's go 50. Okay. That way it just looks nice and diffused. Alright. So that's pretty good like that. But you can see that it's very, very diffused here. Actually, I'm going to diffuse it even more because it still looks too harsh. Alright. So there's not a whole lot of shadow to it. You take its opacity down. That looks much better. Okay, so obviously that the shadow here towards the the base of the helicopter is going to be harsher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this shadow again. I'm going to get a mask, just a square box, and I'm going to keep that. I'm going to feather that up to like 50. Now nah, let's go 100. And I'm just going to take the fast blur down to like, yeah, 40. I say 40. All right, so that way, and I'm actually going to change the opacity because it's going to change throughout the whole thing. But once it reaches this point, that's when it gets to the strongest and it's going to start fading in from about this point. So the closer and closer it gets to the helicopter, the darker that part of the shadow gets and I'm actually going to take the fast blur down a little bit more okay that looks pretty good all right next thing I'm going to do is add some dust now the dust obviously is going to sell this very well so uh, paying attention to the details is quite important now you can get good dust elements at actionvfx.com um, they don't cut the edge off um, like video copilots one does um, they're very good quality 4k um, very nice I think there's some free ones too I'm not 100% sure but they're really great actionvfx.com I'm just gonna drag my footage in bring it back here to where the helicopter is kind of doing its thing turn it into the 3d layer let's drag it up a bit that way a bit and let's just make sure that it's where it should be okay so it looks pretty good but I'm gonna have to obviously cut off the bottom here because this is not a action VFX asset unfortunately but the way I'm gonna fix it is get a mask at the bottom I'm going to subtract it and I'm going to feather it like crazy I take this up a bit Okay, just like that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring it down just a little. Alright, and so you can see that it's on top of our character here. So I'm just going to add another mask. This is going to be a bit of keyframing. It doesn't have to be 100% on it, just because it's going to be pretty feathered out. And let's go to subtract. Let's feather that up. Okay, 48 seems pretty good. All right, and I'm just going to keyframe the path. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to, let's see, I'm gonna add a tint just because I want it to look a little more like the dirt color. So, let's go there. Alright. Let's take the tint out mount down just a little. Okay, that looks good. And I'm just going to duplicate that. And I'm just going to go into time. Time stretch. Let's go 75. And we'll just keep it like that. All right, so it looks pretty good so far, but I have to kind of blend the helicopter in a little more. So what I'm going to do is create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to get curves and I'm just going to give a just kind of an S curve, just blend some things in a little bit. And you can also add curves and things like that to the actual helicopter layer. 
um, you can just blend it in a little bit better with that. But I'm just going to, for now, add it to the adjustment layer, just to speed things along. Take down the darks, bring up the highlights a little. And that looks okay. I mean, you can see it's a bit of reflection looks kind of strange. And, you know, if I had the time in the helicopter uh, composition over here, I'd really take the time to maybe put some grunge on the helicopter because it, obviously they're not going to look that new. Or maybe just before you even film it, add some grunge to it. I should have done that, which would have been a little more realistic. Um, but, you know, it looks pretty, pretty decent already. But, you know, you can still see the... Let's see where to go. You can still see the trees and stuff on here from that mat. So what I'm going to have to do to fix that is I'm going to go to the helicopter layer. Oops, it's going to be this one. I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm just going to get a mask onto this. I'm just going to trace roughly around the helicopter. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm just going to keyframe the path because it's going to be on top here. So I've got to watch his head here. And I'm just going to do more keyframing. Yay. Okay, that looks pretty good. But now I'm going to have to add it onto this end as well because you can see it's showing through. So I'm just going to... I am just actually should be careful of this because it's adding to the blades here. So I'm just going to take that a little out over there looks pretty decent and then the final thing is just adding a color grade onto it like i did in post um, and this is just a basic thing you guys can go do a whole bunch of other stuff to it this is just kind of showing you what i learned from it and kind of how i tackled it um, along with the mistakes that i made and um, just ways to improve uh, different compositing techniques and so on Whew, that was a long one hope you guys were able to sit through that whole thing uh, maybe you learned something cool. Great. Let me know in the comments below what you took away from this video. But anyways, um, if you guys enjoy After Effects, Premiere Pro, uh, filmmaking in general, consider subscribing. I'm going to make more in the future. And remember, learn, film, repeat. And until next time, keep smiling, keep shooting.